We here on the first day of the Confort Woodland Show, which is back for the first time in four years. I'm joined by John from Confort. John, how does it feel to be back at the show? It feels great. This is actually my first one because uh, I've actually just joined Confort about five months ago. So um, I've come from the, the public sector, uh, the, the public forest estates in England, basically for 24 years prior to this. So it's, it's great. It's fantastic to be here. Yeah, no, no, totally. And for you, as you say, five months in the road, Confort, how's that gone so far? It's been really, really interesting. Uh, basically, I've come from very much a productive forestry background within uh, Forestry England, Forest Enterprise England over the years. So I've got a, a really big appreciation for, for timber as part of that as well. So, And one of the big things I've been involved with has been the National Wood Strategy, which we're currently looking at. So looking at the future, looking at um, the, the, the softwood production, which is a big bulk of our timber and will continue to be so. And, and obviously we want to ensure, looking at the, the future forecast, that we can get more softwood planted so that we can we can deal with things like net zero and, and obviously timber security issues as well as we start to compete for timber with other countries across the world. So, And with your background then and with your experience so far at Confort, what kind of place do you think forestry is in, in, in general, in England maybe specifically? I think it's in a, a really exciting place because if you look now what we've got, we've got the UCO scheme, uh, the England Woodland Creation Scheme, which is probably one of the best schemes that has ever existed. But at the moment, it's not seeing a lot of productive softwood planting from that. And that's what we want to try and change. But it's really encouraging. There's been a recognition that we need more, more woodlands, more forests, more trees. It, it's good for what we're trying to achieve as well with net zero. So we're in a really good place. We've just really got to, to start to really bang the drum about that we need to have that little bit more focus again on timber production like we used to do. Some fantastic forests like Grisdale, uh, Fetford Forest where I've worked, those were timber plantations that were planted for, for, for essentially for timber production and now they deliver so much for society, for nature and I just feel that we just need to just have that, that in, our, in, our, in the forefront of our minds again that we should be focusing on trying to bring in the industry, bring in the economic benefits uh, to then allow us to achieve some fantastic things in the future. Hmm. And maybe not to ask you too difficult a question, but how do you think we, because obviously one of the kind of oppositions, the barriers to overcome is maybe public opinion against conifer plantations. How do you think we overcome that? I think obviously it, it, it starts, I suppose, at schools. It starts with uh, parents and, and everyone promoting and being positive about about the trees, all the trees, and what they're, they're doing for us are fantastic things. They obviously soak up carbon, but they do so, so much more. And But, you know, ultimately, you know, the, these woodlands, you know, people grow up with, with spruce, but well, I came from Scotland originally. And so I've always, you know, it, you know it's been part of my, my childhood as well. It's, you know, see, so I think we've just got to sort of like, you know, clean up maybe some of the, the things of the past and some of the mistakes we did make, mm. planting trees perhaps in the wrong place, using techniques that were, that were not good for the environment, some ground prep techniques and things like that. So I think we're much better now. We, we, we've learned a lot of lessons from the past. We've just not got to dwell on it. We just need to, to get on now and just make sure that we can we can get that, 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 that timber for the future. Mm. And we're obviously speaking in the week the FC has announced uh, changes to the consultation process when it comes to woodland creation applications. I guess I'm just wondering what your reaction has been to that, that change. You know what, uh, Minister Harrison, our Forestry Minister, she's been fairly bullish in saying that she, she wants to take a chainsaw to hit the time it takes to plant a tree. She, she's really listening to us. She understands that we've fallen well short of our, our targets in England. We've done a lot better this year. We've, we've actually done over 3,000 hectares, I believe, which is, which is positive. Uh, you know, but you know, really, so that that messaging from from Trudy has been echoed really in the the government's intent with the the fact that they've given the Forestry Commission more responsibilities um, now regards consultation. Now these are going to be more on the the, the lower sensitivity areas. We're still going to have statutory consultations, etc., as normal in the the more upland and sensitive sites like triple SIs, AONBs, etc. So, and these are the areas where quite often the big forestry, plantations, commercial forestry and activity, processing activity lies. So we've just got to bear that in mind as well that, you know, we really want to just change attitudes and just really take that bigger view and importance of even even if it is forestry plantations or, or softwood plantations, mm -hmm. the benefits that's going to have for society in the future. Yeah. Listen, I think that's something we can all agree on. John, thanks very much for speaking to us. I hope the show goes great. Nice to meet you as well. Thanks, Jack. Cheers, John. Cheers.